Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, here for episode 24, the last one of calendar year 2018. I wasn't sure if I was going to get a show before New Year's, but I've had a bit of time and there's a couple of stories I want to talk about today, so let's get right into it. First story is just a quick uh, charging update from Tesla. Elon's been doing some Christmas tweeting over the last week or so, and he's announced that there are more superchargers coming for 2019. We kind of knew that anyway. We've been talking about superchargers for quite a long time now. Uh, specifically, though, he focused on Europe. I guess there's a lot of folks still complaining, and uh, with the expectation of Model 3 arriving in European shores in the first part of next year, first half of next year, people are getting a little anxious about being able to charge their cars on trips. So Elon said that uh, all of Europe will be covered by 100% of a supercharging network by the end of 2019. So a tall order. I'm not sure how many stations, uh, actual uh, charging ports and stations are going to be deployed. Uh, the article that I'm looking at didn't give any numbers, but obviously the main concerns are just the Model 3s, of course, coming out. Uh, so uh, if you are in Europe and you're going to be getting a Model 3 and you're worried about supercharging, fret not, by the end of next year, um, there should be enough to cover all of Europe. And also that includes more expansion in Canada, the U.S. and other places. All good news uh, for, for Tesla folks out there for whether you have a Model 3, a Model S or an X. There's more supercharging coming up for next year. Got a quick update from Renault. Now, we don't see a lot of Renault here in North America, but in Europe, they're a pretty big manufacturer, and they've actually sold over 200,000 electric vehicles to date um, since uh, starting uh, production of electric vehicles. Uh, maybe not a ton, you know, but certainly a pretty big number on the world stage. Uh, 175,000 are actually electric cars, and the majority of those uh, being the Renault Zoe, which uh, I've talked about on a couple of shows, and when I was out at Fully Charged, uh, showed you guys a little bit about the Zoe. Uh, over 100, almost about 130,000 Zoes that have been uh, produced. Uh, the Kangoo ZE, or ZE, depending on how you want to pronounce that, of about 37,000, and then a few others, with most notice, noticeably the Twin which is their funky kind of little runabout. Uh, really fun to drive, from my understanding, of about 25,000 of those. So it's good to see Renault continue its its production in electric cars. And again, that's that's all of Europe, so it's not they're not doing too bad for just staying in Europe. Let's hope, though, that the, uh, the, Mitsubishi, the alliance they have with Nissan and Mitsubishi will help them continue to thrive in EV growth and production and come out with new models. So we'll stay tuned for that. Quick update on Volkswagen. I know I've talked a lot about the Volkswagen, but there's some renderings that came out after I did the last show about the ID hatch, which is being tested right now. Of course, you saw some film on the last show, and if you've seen the full, the last one of the last fully charged episodes, they've done uh, did a drive around with one of the camo IDs or a couple of the camo IDs. The internal name for these is Neo. I talked about on the last show. Um, but uh, hopefully we will see it in 2019. So I'm putting some pictures up behind me. Um, there's three versions of the ID. It's supposed to be a base uh, with about a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack and about 330 kilometers of WLTP range. So take off like 30% for EPA or so. Uh, there'll be a mid, uh, mid base package or a middle trim package with a range of about 450 kilometers or so. Again, and more power. Don't know the battery sizes, but you could probably extrapolate maybe something around 60 or so or 57 something like that uh, and again the range numbers are WLTP and a, a top uh, trim ID with a range of about 600 kilometers and more kilowatt obviously power and all that good stuff no indication of battery pack size but that's a pretty tall order I don't know how, how much uh, how many kilowatt hours are going to pack into the frame in that MEV platform we'll have to see if they can get into something like an 85 or a 90 or a 95 could be and maybe if they do that they'll get they'll push 450 to 500 kilometers uh, you know getting what the model 3 would do so it's certainly doable um, again these numbers that I've talked about are WLTP numbers so you've got to take them a little bit lightly from that but I, I like the the renderings I think that that's probably pretty close the front end might be a little different of what the ID is going to come we'll have to wait and see of next year's auto shows 
Um, it should have anywhere from 150 to 100 to 200 horsepower in power ratings and have an integrated 7.2 or 11 kilowatt charger and be able to fast charge DC up to 125 kilowatts. So we'll stay tuned for that and see what happens. Um, they are planning Volkswagen has committed to launching the ID by the end of next year or it might slip into early 2020. Uh, so I'll, let's err on the side of caution and maybe say first quarter of 2020, but I do hope they can bring it out sooner. These are going to be produced in the uh, Zwickau, Germany plant. So good luck on that, and we'll, we'll hope to see more real information when, when uh, VW debuts the ID and some of the other platforms next year. A few stories about Nissan quickly. Now they're expanding their LEAF, their sales of the LEAF uh, for, uh, more globally and internationally. They're introducing it now, the LEAF, into seven new markets they call Asia and Oceania marketplaces. These include Australia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, and Thailand. In fact, in South Korea and Thailand, they're already taking pre-orders for the 40 kilowatt hour version LEAF or LEAF 2.0. Uh, good to see that they're continuing to expand in those markets as uh, Nissan has always looked at the global marketplace from electrification. So hopefully they will, the, the Leaf, uh, second generation Leaf, will do well in those marketplaces. So uh, hopefully we'll see seeing some numbers. Uh, the article didn't specify exactly when they're going to go on sale, but I'm going to predict, you know, Q1 or first half of next year, uh, most likely probably a tad sooner. Now, also on Nissan Leaf, there was an update done by a gentleman called Electric Swede. And if you haven't followed him on YouTube, go check him out. He's done some great videos and I appreciate uh, him doing this. Now, he's done some updated uh, testing on the, the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf. Uh, up re with regards to rapid gate if, if you're not familiar with rapid gate you've been hiding somewhere but i can tell you uh briefly that it's basically nissan's battery management that they start throttling down fast charging as the battery temperatures heat up uh, to protect the batteries from permanent damage uh, heat is a problem with all batteries of course and nissan throttles it but uh obviously if you're going on long trips with the nissan leaf 40 kilowatt hour version um, you might have to take some extra time because your throttling times could double or almost triple depending on the temperatures uh, or your charging time, excuse me, depending on how it's throttled. Well, uh, this gentleman did some more testing and it seems that Nissan might have, might have come out with a software update or, uh, or some new software for the current ones that are being manufactured. And this specifically talks about models, I believe, that were built um, after October, uh, after, actually at last month, November 2018. Um, so it looks like that he's tested some of these and he's actually experiencing faster charging times on rap on successive rapids. So instead of after a second or a third rapid, the charging times dropping from about 42 kilowatts down to maybe 18 or 16, um, he's seeing fairly consistent times uh, or, or uh, um energy ratings of down into the mid 20s uh, to the upper 20s now so that's that's substantially quicker than before so hopefully it seems like nissan might have tweaked the software which is what a lot of people were asking them to do to to allow some faster charging on on successive rapids um, there's also a rumor that uh, the newer the these leafs that are built at, uh, from november 2018 onwards even though they're fully kil 40 kilowatt versions they're in the same housing that the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack is going to be which means in theory that there's more empty space they're not as jam-packed into the housing or into the um, into the shell that the batteries sit in that case basically protective case and uh, that there's more uh, air more space there to allow for a little bit better passive cooling and passive thermal management i don't know if that's true uh, i am expecting um, to hear more soon on the the leaf um, 60 kilowatt version but i i do thank that gentleman for doing that and on that note about the new uh, 60 kilowatt hour version leaf uh, there's uh, nissan has confirmed that they're going to announce that leaf at ces next month in the next couple of weeks um, which is i think the week before the north american international auto show in detroit which is where i'll be so I'll, i won't be able to see the announcement fresh but i'll certainly hopefully nissan will have the 60 kilowatt hour leaf uh at uh, in the detroit uh, theater there 
but uh, they're calling it the Leaf E+. Plus. Again, this is not official yet. This is just kind of rumors, but I think there's enough. I've heard this enough times that it's probably going to be pretty true. Uh, with a 60 kilowatt hour version, as I mentioned, expected to offer about 360 kilometers of range, so up about 120 or so. And I, I take it these are EPA numbers. Uh, the article not suggesting anything else. Uh, it should offer some better, ther better thermal management. We don't 100% know whether there'll be some liquid cooling or just a, a different way of doing passive management maybe with some fans or something who knows um, faster charging you know higher acceleration more horsepower all that kind of stuff now the reports are suggesting that the cost of the new leaf will be around 35 for us which will put it around Chevrolet bolt and Tesla model 3 pricing or, or entry-level model 3 pricing anyway um, that you know if it, if it can you know get over some of the success of rapid charging issues uh, other than that the leaf's a great car so um i think it's gonna be very competitive depending on what they come out with so let's wait and see and uh, but good news that the nissan will be announcing it in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for that now i did a 2018 summary on the last show uh so i won't be going through that today even though this is the just before new year's or new year's show basically but what, what can we look forward to for next year for 2019 um you know there's lots of different models that are be going to be coming out we know that the tesla model 3 dominated 2018 it's quite clear and it's as i say it's no surprise you can get a bumper sticker and put my name next to that and say no surprise um, because I've been saying it enough, but obviously there's some new, um, you know, it's going to be about at least another 10 new plug-in models to hit the market next year, probably more than that, which will increase um, the EVs and plug-in hybrids to more than 40 different models when you look at a global market. So that's pretty good. That's probably taking uh, China out of the equation. Um, and I think where the excitement's going to be is, is in the Koreans, um, you know, with Hyundai and Kia. And, you know, one of the obviously one of the models to look forward to to 2019 is the Kona Electric. It's already started shipping already in Europe, but as a more global perspective with an EPA range estimated of 258 miles. Um, one of the exciting things I talked about on the last show was the price point that you could get it below $30,000 US with the federal tax credits if you qualify for the full credits and incentives. So for a 64 kilowatt version but all electric battery vehicle with a range of about 250 miles uh, at that price point of under 30 man that's a sweet spot so uh, you know that's going to be a as i've been saying for quite a while the kona electric and the the next vehicle of course the kia nero ev uh, those cars are going to be cars to watch um, again you know the nero a similar battery pack similar platform slightly bigger uh, around 240 miles or so uh, you know the same battery pack we don't have pricing yet it's supposed to go on sale in canada for uh, sorry in california for next year in a few select states it's supposed to be in canada too because i have a I have a friend in in the west coast who's waiting for a nero ev delivery in february or march so we'll I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but uh, I'll keep you posted on that. But certainly from the U.S., it'll go on sale in California and a few, a few select states, probably ZEV states, as soon as February of next year. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and again, the price hasn't fully been announced, but it's expected to be about 38000 U.S., uh, slightly more than the, the Kona, obviously because it's a little bit bigger, with a little bit more features um, from that standpoint. So that's certainly going to be a vehicle to watch for 2019. Well, what else? Well, I talked about the Kia Soul in the last episode. Um, if they can get it out by the end of 2019, which is they're expected to actually uh, get out the uh, 2.0 version or the Gen 2 version of the uh, of the um, Soul EV, the Kia Soul EV by mid next year. It's supposed to have the same battery pack as the the, the uh, other Hyundai counterparts, the Kona. And if that's the case on that platform, boy, it's going to get you know at least 240 miles, maybe slightly more. Don't have any pricing, but it should be really competitive around that 30 to 35 thousand dollar US mark. So stay tuned for that. But that's exciting because that's again a car that uh, a lot of people that have the Gen One um, Soul really love it. Now, if you've got some money to spend, well, the por the Porsche um formerly the mission e but now the taycan uh, will be coming out sometime in 2019 so that's certainly a model to watch for for the luxury performance electric vehicles um, it's going to have two motors produce more than 600 crazy horsepower and accelerate you from zero to 62 or so in about three and a half seconds top speed 155 miles wherever you can drive that other than the autobahn i don't know 
um, with a range of about 300 miles, a lot less if you're doing 155 miles an hour, I'll tell you that, that's for sure. But a price of about 75,000 bucks US, that's pretty attractive from a Porsche standpoint. Uh, so wait and see what happens. Battery packs are estimated to be about 80 or and 95 kilowatt hour pack sizes, so multiple options. So stay tuned for that. But you know, for, for that luxury segment, it's definitely heating up. Uh, with Porsche coming into the game and being able to bring their um, Taycan to market. Now, I've talked a lot about the Audi e-tron. It's another one that's coming up in 2019. From a launch pers perspective, that luxury crossover SUV, boy, that's a that's a place to get into. You know, it's got a pair of um, motors to give you all-wheel drive of about 400 horsepower or so. It's uh, somewhere between the size of the Audi Q5 and Q7, so it's in that size point with a range of about 230 miles and 150 kilowatt uh, quick charging capabilities. All that good stuff. Battery pack is confirmed at 95 uh, kilowatt hours with that range again around 230, 240 miles and a base price of 70, just under 75,000 US for a luxury SUV. It shouldn't be too bad. I do like the Audi. I, I know that there are some videos and some testing that's going on about efficiencies that may not be that efficient as some of the others but again it's an suv folks so <laughs> suvs traditionally aren't the most uh, efficient vehicles anyway um, obviously with more weight and more capacities and you know more space for passengers and all the amenities and appointments it's going to add some weight to that so I, I i highly doubt that it'll be the most efficient battery electric vehicle on the market but it will satisfy those wanting to get into luxury suv if they don't uh, if they don't like audi then you can also look at the mercedes-benz eqc that'll be coming out in 2019 it's supposed to come out uh, go into production around the middle of next year it's built on the platform of the glc class suv so that'll give you some essence for sizing and uh, we've seen some pictures and announcements uh 400 some odd horsepower sounds pretty fam familiar based on a couple of uh, 200 horsepower uh, or so motors placed on each axle uh, 80 kilowatt hour battery pack confirmation with the same range of about 240 miles so again i don't know efficiencies but from a smaller pack to get the same range as audi is doing pretty good uh don't have any price confirmed pricing it's estimated to be about eighty thousand dollars us as a starting point so we'll wait and see but again, if you're interested in that luxury SUV market, you've got some choices. Now, the Mini E is a car that I, I looked at last year, actually. I had uh, talked to one of the product managers here in Canada at the Canadian International Auto Show uh, almost a year ago, uh, earlier this year. And they had come out with the e Mini Electric Concept at the, 200, at the 2017 Frankfurt Motor Show, and they were flogging that around. Um, well, it looks like 2019 is when the Mini Electric is supposed to go into production sometime before the end of next year so that when i hear those kind of statements or i read those kind of statements to me that means okay december of next year so about a year from now because people leave things you know they stretch it out however let's hope it's going to be sooner there's not many specs for this i know it's kind of eagerly awaited but it it should be capable of at least 200 miles on a single charge that's kind of the new threshold now from entry level from a BEV perspective uh, getting into that 200 mile club now as an entry point no specs on batteries or pricing or all that kind of stuff so stay tuned for that but uh, for many fans out there and I know that there are a lot of you uh, that should be exciting when it does come out last but not least uh, there's a quick article that came out uh, I've talked about boats, I've talked about trucks, I've talked about uh, sea dues uh, in, in, from an electrification standpoint. I don't think I've talked about camping vehicles or RVs yet. I'm trying to think because there have been so many shows now being episode 24 and prior to that on the Model 3 Owners Club show. But uh, Iridium is a company that's going to launch an e the e-mobile electric motorhome. Uh, it's a consortium of German companies, and it's going to be uh, unveiled actually at the CMT Fair, at the Travel Fair CMT in Stuttgart next month, so in January of next year. And if they, they plan on meeting a 2019 production timeline, so people will be able to actually buy these before the end of 2019. Um, this caravan or, 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 you know, I think it's a B class, either uh, A or B class, if I get, uh, I think it's A class size, if I've got my... I try I forget the classes somebody's going to correct me but uh, you see the pictures here 
Um, that's a very popular market, especially in Europe, because it's not huge. You know, these, these big, big motorhomes that you see that are on bus chassis, you know, that kind of 44, 45 feet long. They're not the rage in Europe. These smaller ones, you know, 25 to 29, 30 feet maybe are much more maneuverable, easier to get around and calling them caravanning. And they're very popular in Europe. So I think this thing's going to do well. Um, looks like it's going to have about 200 kilometers of range, um, offer up to 22 kilowatt of uh, charging and and uh, fast charging up to 50 kilowatt which is good um there's no other specs other than that no pricing anything but uh you know it, it's a definitely a good market uh, anyway good luck to them and uh, i'll keep my eyes and uh, if anybody hears anything more about these guys send me an email i'd love to hear about that well, that's it, folks. That's all I had for this show. I did a pretty comprehensive review of the year in the last show and talked about a lot. So uh, not a whole lot happens between Christmas and New Year's, but I wanted to get a little bit more information out before the New Year's closes. So as always, I do appreciate uh, any feedback. Now, before I give you all that information, just want to remind you, I've still got that um, charity raffle going for the Model 3 Frunk set and uh, a EV Revolution hat and coffee mug that I'm going to throw into there. Um, I've almost got uh, 100 tickets sold. I think I'm about around 95 as of today's taping, which is fantastic. I just I, I'm just blown away by by the support, folks. I'd love to get just over. I'd love to get over 100 tickets sold. You know, gets me about $500 that I can put towards the charity. Uh, more would be great. Now, this again, this is going to run until um, mid midday or so on January 1st, and then the the, I'll close it off and uh, pick a winner and I'll announce that on the next show in early January. But if you haven't got your tickets, uh, please see the Eventbrite link in the show notes and go buy them. And uh, it's great for a worthy cause, as I've said before. Now, on that note, if you'd like to email me, if you've got questions, comments, please do so at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. Always love hearing from people. And uh, I've got a couple of emails that I'm kind of kicking keep keeping the back burner there that i'll probably start bringing up into some future mailbags coming up for the early part of next year if you will want to follow me on twitter please do so at ev rev show is my twitter handle uh just past 2,000 followers that's fantastic folks you're watching this through youtube thank you very much if you have not subscribed please do so if you have don't forget you can click the bell to get automatically notified when new episodes come up i will continue to do audio podcasts for 2019 i haven't got anything like lined up at the moment but i hope to within the next a couple of weeks get something going on that you can check out ev revolution show audio podcast through your itunes podcast app because i'm on itunes i'm on google play i'm on TuneIn radio spotify stitcher and all that good stuff so you can find out the podcast if you haven't listened to any go back and check some of them out some some of them out you can check out the feeder site as well which is uh www.evrevolutionshow.com if you want to. Uh, that's strictly for the auto podcast where I keep those and I have descriptions there. And finally, as always, a heartfelt thanks for all of my Patreon supporters. If you're not sure what Patreon is, you can go check it out at www.patreon.com forward slash EV Revolution Show and get information about thinking about supporting me for my endeavors here on the show. And with all that, I think that I'm done in fairly record time this, this time, folks. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to wish everybody all the best for New Year's, for a safe, prosperous, healthy, it's going to be an exciting year, a lot of stuff happening in the EV world. So until the next show, please stay safe. Happy New Year again, and all the best, and we'll see you next time. Bye.